comparable and worse. Well, worse Surgery in what way? Pitch. Worse investment or worse pitch? Both. Well, he knows about the investment wow. We just had one just now. That yeah, the bad. last one was pretty. Uh, that was pretty bad. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Girl on drugs. She was scary. Girl on drugs. Yeah, no. I mean, people walk in there, and some of them are prepared. All of them, you can just tell, have spent hours trying to memorize their pitch, and they just sit there and they get really, really nervous. And sometimes it goes in a good direction, and sometimes they just lose it, and that's when it gets bad or interesting or entertaining, depending on how you look at it. This last one was pretty entertaining. Well, the cougar one, it's hard because sometimes people come out and ask for money with a real plan what they're going to do with it. They just, Mark said it really well. You're telling us what you need, not what the business is going to do or where it's going to go. So do you, uh, each of you have a different philosophy on what to invest and what not to invest? Yeah, if you start crying, Barbara will give you money. <laughs> <laughs> we try to invest Barbara's money for us. Barbara's becoming more of a hard ass. Yeah. I'm she really has going on this year, Barbara. I'm tired of being beaten up. She by lost these her money on a couple of the ones, and I didn't uh, lose any money. That's what happens when you lose money. <laughs> yeah, she gets mad because I pulled when I came in last season. I, I pulled a few tricks on them, and they got mad. Then well, I caught yeah, up with my tricks. I think Mark, I we figured those out pretty quick. Yeah, they no, did. But then I introduced new tricks, and now Barbara's mad at me. I'm mad at you all the time, but not as mad as I am at this guy. Cool. No, look, I just tell the truth, and I think there's a million deals in the agency. There's a thousand more that we haven't seen yet thousand more after that. So I never get emotionally involved. I look at how much cash flow the thing potentially can generate. I don't want to pay more than five times that and a story. I don't Which care about great, where they because he's so, he's so short-sighted on everything he looks at. Any of us with any vision at all, we get all the good deals. That's if right. you knew it was going to be a home run, then the guy the would be on the show. Of being a disciplined investor versus being an emotional <laughs> Mark, what happens it's to businesses? It's the difference between being able to add value, see the future, and make it happen, or having no vision and only looking backwards and making money. Mark, what happens to businesses that go with Kevin? <laughs> he's the undertaker. They go away to die. And you know, contrary to Kevin's philosophy, if he always knows, he's always focused on the money, the money. If I hear that one more time. Contrary to him, I never focus on the money. I focus on the individual. And I have invested in so many businesses where the business was off, but the individual was so strong, they reinvented it, and we've made a ton of money. I absolutely so agree I think Barbara. he's so off with this left-brain analytical Harvard pretend H. MBA types. He never went to Harvard. I know, but he pretends like he went to Harvard. <laughs> 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 no, no, hey, so when you get a good jockey, you, so you can replace the horse. But when you have a good horse, you don't have a good jockey. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the jockeys will count. So, yeah. I think we'll have an open so at least you see we have a different style of investing. I'm right. They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so are, is there no business you've ever regretted not investing in? No, you know, I never, as soon as they walk past those doors, if I haven't invested in them, they're dead to me. I don't care. I don't regret any business either that I haven't invested in. Even though I've, I've made the wrong decision and not invested in some that have really, really paid off, I just, I just don't regret yeah, There's it. so many things going on, you don't have time to think about that. You know, it's Woulda, like, coulda, shoulda. Yeah, it's like thinking about your sixth grade girlfriend. <laughs> What's the point, right? They're gone. Yeah. I don't know. I've regretted a few businesses. I haven't been able to get those beat out. I'm quite honest. Really? Yeah, because I can clearly see the potential. I know they've married the wrong guy. As I marched down that type of thing and that poor sucker, it happened here today. It's terrible. What? Who? With me with the jewelry? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> slavery. <laughs> slavery. Whatever. What do you mean but slavery? Yes. Yeah, it's a choice of words are better now. Than you know, right. I've already forgotten the name of that. Yeah. My deal. That's the there's so many great entrepreneurs <laughs> out there. There's so many great people. The longer we stay on the air, the better the ideas get, the more hope that people need, and the better the businesses. And the more yeah. successes we have, which is really bottom line, half of the charm. Yeah, you can tell the show has really taken off. I mean, you look at the repeat numbers, that's one indication. But then you can tell by the deal flow. And people coming in to pitch us are also far more educated. They know our styles. They know some of the nuances. You know, they'll come back to us with examples of things, particularly the guys who've been here a long time, what they've done. Um, so it, it makes it a little bit more and, interesting. And they get us. to know us, which makes it a little challenging. You know, having Mark on this year had a whole other element. It's been a bad element, work. quite honestly. Right. It, work. He's got he, too much money. Well, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not the money, Barbara. You know what it is? It's, it's a clever way to cut us out. He's made it a lot harder. He's made it, he made it. I have to work now. It's yeah. the money. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not, because he's so busy that, you know what, his mascot's going to show up to the meeting with the poor new entrepreneur, and they're going to realize they got screwed. Oh, please. Picture yourself it, thinking, I'm going to open, gonna open a store called a dollar for all the Shark Tank crap I bought Mark Cuban store. Because, can I just tell you, some of us just know what to do. 
You walk in, you say this, 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 done, and everybody's happy, we make money. Others, they get so confused. They just think it's going to take now, so no much question, time. Mark is the richest shark. Absolutely. But I have just enough money to screw him up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good thing. See, a lot of people understand, none of us have to ever work again. So once you get past the X amount of million mark, the money doesn't really matter. It's how much effort you're going to put in it, and do you specialize mm -hmm. in that. The money always matters. No, I'm always talking, I'm, no, I'm talking about, okay, so somebody has a hundred million, Mark has a billion. You're not giving it all right. to a mini right, guy. Right, 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 you're only right, right. giving them a million, two million, three million. I'd like to get a few of those billions. No, I got pictures of mine myself. That's a different story. And also, what we're learning here this year is that not everything is okay in America because we're getting real companies that can't get bank loans, that can't even factor their receivables. They can't get loans on real sales, on real goods, on real business. They can't get any money. That is a big problem. And we're, we're a microcosm of what's going on all across America. We're a bank that has a lot more flexibility. We're the bank of tank, and we can actually lend money where most banks won't do it anymore. And that's one of the things that we'll ask that might not come through on the show or that might be edited out, that we want to see if there's an opportunity to create jobs, how many jobs, yes. where the products are manufactured. You know, can we contribute in a way that's very positive in, in a, a more macro sense? And that's, I think, in all of our cases. Now, it all comes down to making money because, you know, Damon said right off the bat when I came in, you know, you'll, you'll have a sense where you'll feel sorry for somebody and maybe it'll be charitable, but you can't ever do charity because it always turns into a loss and people end up getting hurt. Because the worst thing you want to do, and Kevin does a good job, but it's shockingly enough, that, you know, if it's a bad idea, giving the money only just delays the inevitable. Yeah. And so you've got to really be clear on that. But again, on the more macro sense, when we can take a business who can't go to a bank, who might have been able to two years ago, five years ago and allow them to get back on their feet or allow them to accelerate their growth, you know, we want to know how many jobs are being created and, you know, how we're participating and, you know, that's important to us. And, you know, you don't really see what happens after Shark Tank ends because that's when our real work starts yes. and no one is very satisfying, much more satisfying than saying, I'm in. You know what I would love to see? Well, I would love, wait, 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 go ahead. Not see, we go through the Excuse me, I'm not finished. <laughs> I just wanted to say that once we get in bed with these great entrepreneurs, we always start talking about getting in bed jobs. with somebody. We start yeah. creating other jobs because of their great talent and our money put behind them. And that's right. very satisfying. You actually feel yes. like you're making a real difference. She's I right. You know what? I'd like I'd like to invite President um, Barack Obama to come down and actually see real businesses and what they're going through. I'd like to Be see him as a guest shark. <laughs> what no, I mean, friends? literally, just have any have, if, you had, if you had the politicians come in and just listen to the stories, these are the real small businesses. These are the people who are on the cusp of making something happen or are potentially on the cusp of losing everything because they couldn't find what they needed to get to the next step. Most of these people that I see are probably ten times more advanced than I was when I first started. Yep. And they cannot get arrested. They can't get a loan. They can't get anything. Well, I think, I think some amazing. of them are, are far ahead, but, you know, as Mark said, even a bad idea can be turned around. What I really love about the show is it gets bigger. It just shows people that there's hope. Because a lot of people out there don't even know how to start. They don't, they don't know how to start a business. Where to start. They don't, you know, they yeah, go to their friends, they go to their families. those that have no hope and shouldn't have it. Sometimes well, I think everyone has hope. No. Everyone has no, hope. Some some just it's it's some it's yeah. a tragedy to see somebody spend all of their family's yes. capital on an idea that's never been vetted by the private sector independently, arm's length. Come in here, we don't know where you went to school. Well, well, we literally had people was. say, I had a dream. Right? <laughs> I dreamed about it. And in my dream, oh, yeah. the dog <laughs> <messed it. laughs> They told me to go. Barbara was in their dream. But you know what? You know, honestly, that is the only time that I really get pissed off when people ask for an exorbitant amount of money and it's not reality. And I'm not mad per se that they, it's not reality. I'm mad that grandma will put her money in there, her friends and family put money in there on this whim and this hope. And this person will burn through everything else. And but Damon, say, how oh. do they know any better? How do they know any better? They don't know any better. When you started out, when Mark started out, who did we they know They don't like know you, but I, I get really pissed off because they're going to the everyday hardworking people well, who are now out of work, who are taking well, out their 401 That's what I love about this show. Because it gives you the opportunity to see five people who've done it and ask those tough questions. You know the difference between when we all started our businesses versus now? When we hear it. We always ask them, so how much of your own money did you put in? Is it your own money? And what did you spend it on? And it's always lawyers, lawyers, yes. regulation, mm. trademarks, patents, 
everything but the business itself. Well, some of them were. Some no, of them. a lot of them. A lot of them. Rob, before I asked for money, I was seven years without a dime, and I never knew if it was going to go anywhere. Damon, when I started my business, I went and asked the guy who worked with my dad in the factory who had more seniority, because I thought he was the most successful guy that my family knew. That's why I love this. There's five successful people up here that are asking the real questions and people can learn from that. And when so I which started should... my business, I didn't eat for almost three years. I You're no still not eating. You're still not eating. I was in New York City totally naked. I was crawling in the streets uh, like begging for dogs. Naked in bed? What is it with you? What the cockroach you were? Cut that story. Barbara, yeah. tell the truth. You were a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing how some things never change, right? right? <laughs> so, what should be, what should people be spending their money on in, in these early phases, rather than the lawyers and the trademark? Sales. Getting their stuff to market. Period. Number one. Creating sales. Selling. Sales cures all. Sales cures all. Creating right. sales. But that's why I want our politicians to watch the show, so they get to see that the money is going to things that are counterproductive, and that's keeping people from growing businesses, hiring people, because if you're spending, you know. Hundred dollars an hour on a lawyer, a trademark lawyer, a patent lawyer, you know, an accountant, a tax advisor who's filling out forms for you. That's time that could otherwise be spent visiting customers, visiting prospects, selling your product. Well, it's good for the attorney's business. Yeah, it's but really you know, nice. it's money doesn't always solve. But I always say the only thing that's more expensive than education is ignorance. And if you're not educated, you will spend ten dollars just the way you'll spend ten million dollars, and it'll all go down the toilet. You'll always think. Better website, bigger advertising, bigger billboard. Just start selling. Yeah, like What's we the one thing that every entrepreneur says they want to spend their money on? Advertising. A public marketing. relations company. Advertising. Yeah, we public you know, something yeah. has gone wrong in the last three years in America because we vilified business. All of a sudden, people that create the only jobs that matter, the ones in the private sector, are vilified. I don't think, yeah, I, I I think we vilify business. I think we vilify guys really. like you from I Wall hear <laughs> all the time fat cats flying on planes. You want fat cats flying on planes because those are the guys who create jobs. I don't want to put them in jail. I want more fat cats. I want more jobs. I don't want a fat cat on a plane. I want a guy I who's starting a business. Of I want to join. I want yeah. a lot of ways to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I think there's something wrong. I hope we change that. This show should you know, glorify the entrepreneur. Yeah, but there's, see, this is one of the areas that Kevin and I disagree. There's I financial, in, there's financial sharp, engineers, sharp, financial sharp, investment, sharp. and strategic investment. Yeah, so financial engineers aren't entrepreneurs, Mark. Well, I agree, but that's what he's saying. Now, if you're just I'm trying around looking at anybody, anybody, anybody that creates a job in the private sector, I don't care what sector okay, it is, is a real job. A government job has no value at all. That is on the back of the hardworking person. So when I see government growing, I get depressed. When I see an entrepreneur pitching, I get elated. Everybody should feel the same way. We never shrink government, make it smaller, and provide more capital with less regulation to entrepreneurs. I agree too. It's that simple. Are we running for politics here? Or are we no, talking but it's about the show? Time is up. But you running. know what? If Washington watch the show, they might learn something. You know, you, you watch the president's speech, and you have the head of GE. You have all these huge companies who you know are making tens of millions of dollars in stock options and awards. Great, more power to them. But they're not the people who need help. They're the people that have you know, billions of dollars in the bank. And we have people walking in, offering us 50 plus percent of their company for 10,000, or 20,000, and 40,000 dollars. Where if they didn't have to spend on all this bureaucracy, all this regulation, all this form filling, they might need half as much money and be able to start that company. When and I get it going. Right. Uh, well, Mark. last question. Last question. They haven't even asked. Yeah, I know. We're just on the Barbara would shut her Can you guys sort of like then give? Sort of your advice for people who are coming to you and say, what are the do's and don'ts of pitching to the sharks? I mean, if all of us can offer one, I would say, when you walk into the room, the Shark Tank or any room, you better be the smartest person in the world about your business and your industry. Subject matter expert. You've got to know That's because it. if if someone else out there is smarter, they're going to kick your ass. You know, somebody's I, coming I, I'd into. I'd like to answer. I'm a girl. You're coming That's into the I'm Shark not. Tank. You're a woman, baby. Excuse me. You're coming into the Shark Tank, the best thing you could do is pitch to your mother-in-law and let her rip your goddamn thing to shreds because you're going to get better at pitching. I mean, people just really haven't done a great job pitching many, many times because they pitch to the people that love them. What are they going to tell them? You're great. You're amazing. Uh, well, I asked for the tapes. This format's all around the world. So before I started working, I said, show me the show. And I tried to find the three attributes that every successful pitcher made. Success defined by getting a check for one of the sharks. In every case, these three things are there. 
Number one, they were able to articulate the idea in less than 90 seconds. So it was right away obvious how you could make money as an investor. Then they'd spend about three to four minutes articulating how they were the right driver and they could execute the business plan. That was number two. And number three, it was clear from those two that they were leaders. They were leaders. Whether you liked them, you didn't like them, every single time those three things came together and every single guy or woman who got a dollar had those three. But how about but trust? Look, trust, trust happens. Trust if you like them, if they're the brand. Well, you know, I know, we, we know we judge them before, the, before we even start hearing the pitch. You know, that. You, know you look at a few of these pitches, That's even true. the ones that happen today, you'll see those elements there every single time, every single time. That 90 seconds, that first minute and a half, that's everything. Sometimes also people get a deal because I can screw one of these other guys. That just happened very rarely, but as soon as I can screw them no, up, no, no, it does. It's not that you get a deal because you'll screw somebody else. It's that you're on the fence. You don't quite know if you really like it, but if Barbara likes it, <laughs> but I like it a little bit. <laughs> but you know, it does feel good to screw the other sharks. Yeah, it's <laughs> really all about the confirmation that they like it. Okay, so it's not so bad. So maybe that'll put me over the top. But the added glory. It's worth a hundred thousand. Yeah, exactly. To put some yeah. venom in. Good job. It's a great job to have some fun. On that note.